In this video I'm going to show you all you need to know about the Squire Classic Vibe Jaguar Bass. Hey guys, I'm Tyler and you're watching the All You Need To Know Bass Show here on my channel. Thank you for tuning in again for another quarantine special um, in 2020 in the midst of the coronavirus. Um, and today I'm going to be running you through the specs and the tones that you can get from the Squire Classic Vibe Jaguar Bass. This video is in collaboration with the Guitar Center Langley here in the UK, so I'll leave a link to their shop in the description. Um, and if you want to buy this bass for yourself, this very bass, um, it's currently available for sale online on their site. Um, and if you click the link in the description, um, it'll take you straight to this bass and you can order it there and get it sent straight to your door. So first things first, this is a Jaguar bass. Um, and as you can see, it's got a unique shape. It's kind of jazz bass inspired, but it's a, a little bit different, somewhere between um, a Gibson Thunderbird and a jazz bass. And it's Fender's third design, really. It's the design that's kind of been lesser used and um, lesser... And played over the years, but there are still some you know iconic players that have used them. I know Pino Palladino uses Jaguars, um, and John Entwistle had his uh, Fender Bird, which was kind of pretty much Jaguar shaped and sized. Um, and this is actually my first encounter with a Jaguar bass. I've never really come across that many of them. The first thing that I um, noticed about this bass is that it's really fat sounding, and it's actually as a result of the fact that it's a 32 inch scale bass. So the scale length of this is slightly shorter um, than most fenders. Most fenders are 34 inch, which is long scale. Um, and then you get things like the Mustang bass, which is a 30 inch scale bass, which um, is you know four inches shorter from the bridge to the nut. So at 32, this is a medium scale bass and sits right in the middle of those two. And I think it really helps the sound. It really fattens things up a little bit. Um, and also gives you a little bit more playability, it's kind of right down the middle. Um, it's not like a short scale bass, I find I kind of whiz around on it constantly and it's just, it makes me overplay really. Um, I didn't really notice at first that this was a 32 inch scale, um, but it's, you know, it feels quite a lot like a 34, but tonally I think it's just a little bit fatter and it's a little bit easier to play, particularly if you're doing chordal type things high up the neck, you can just get around a little bit easier and I, I quite enjoyed that. So what I'm going to do is run you through all the other specs of the bass um, and then do a little bit of playing just soloed and talk about some of the interesting features and, and things that I think you should know about with this bass and then finish off the video by um, giving you um, a head take comparison of all the different pickup combinations alongside some drums. So I'm going to start off with the main specs of the bass for me um, which is the material. So the body is NATO. If you saw my Squire um, CV70s video, same body wood as that. So this is typically used as a mahogany replacement. It's slightly cheaper wood. Obviously we're looking at the lower end of the market with a Squire base. So NATO, cheaper wood, um, but nice sounding. And it's got really nice figure. Um, it's a bit weird, but it kind of looks like dog fur um, with this sunburst finish, which is it's just kind of kind of cool. Um, but yeah, a little bit prettier than Alder maybe, um, and I thought that was worth mentioning. The neck is a maple neck, so traditional um, Fender choice of wood there for the neck. Um, and then again, a slightly cheaper wood, a replacement wood um, on the fretboard, and um, we have Indian Laurel. This is really a rosewood type sounding wood. Um, I think it's a little bit brighter than rosewood. Um, and the grain isn't quite as, as deep on it. It's a little bit smoother to the touch than rosewood. Um, but definitely in that kind of ballpark, I'd say if you've played a Pau Ferro bass, I'd say it's a little bit darker than Pau Ferro, but it's not quite as dark as rosewood. The other thing to mention is that it does kind of have this slightly um, camely washed out color to it, but um, with a little bit of oil um, into the fretboard, that certainly helps it out. Mineral oil or lemon oil or something like that. That'll just feed the wood and give it a bit more of that classic darker colour. When we look at the electronics, um, interesting features here, I really like this. Um, we have stacked knobs. So these are originally um, from the 62 Fender Jazz Bass, 61, 62, that kind of era. And they, they weren't really a feature for very long. But what it does is give you independent tone control for each of the pickups. 
So you have two volumes, so the silver part of the knob is volume on both, and then beneath that you have a tone control for each, so the back one is the bridge pickup, volume, and then tone, and then the front one is for the front pickup, volume, and tone again. The pickups themselves are Alnico pickups, so that's a feature of the classic Vibe series, they all have Alnico pickups, which is a better material for my mind, it's slightly warmer. I really like Alnico pickups in general, um, and that's on both. So we have a single coil in the back for the jazz bass style pickup, and then a precision bass style pickup in the front. I think it's really important to talk about the pickups and that combination. I think having a P and a J together, it's personally my favourite combination, the one that I use the most often. Um, most frequently I use my Sadowski PJ5, which has obviously a P and a J pickup. Um, and I think you can really cover a load of ground with that combination. Um, you can turn the back pickup off and just go straight for a P bass type tone by using the front pickup or if you want to you can have that back pickup on its own and give that classic jazz burpy sound. Um, I think that's probably the most essential jazz tone to define um, a bass as a jazz bass or a P bass. Obviously with a jazz bass you also have that jazz bass pickup in the front but I find with a PJ you can actually, if you back off the volume a little bit, P bass pickups always come in a little bit hotter. If you back off that front pickup volume um, and have the back pickup on full, you can really get quite a similar tone to a jazz bass. Um, and so for, for me, that's why I prefer this combination over any other. Just going to talk about some of the aesthetic things on the bass. Um, black scratch plate, um, you know, absolutely classic look. I think it looks really good with this sunburst. I think the sunburst itself is a really nice Sunburst, I think it's really well done. I'm not a massive fan of Sunburst myself, but I really find myself gravitating towards this. And looking at it on camera, um, I think it looks great. We have block inlays, um, so a classic 70s feature, and I love block inlays. Coming to the nut, it's a bone nut. Um, and then on the headstock, we have the Jaguar base logo, Squire logo as well. Um, we have Fender classic style tuners, um, they are slightly fluted so it's not too difficult to wrap your strings onto them and then just on the back of the uh, headstock we have the design and back by Fender logo, the serial number and then the crafted in Indonesia. On the back of the base you also have this kind of nifty squire um, back plate, four bolt neck joint and again on the rear really nice figuring um, which I think is quite cool um, just to add a little bit of that kind of class to the base. One thing I forgot to mention is the Fender Bridge. It's a classic vintage style Fender Bridge. You'll find these on Fenders all throughout the eras. My custom shop base has a bridge exactly like this, so you're not really losing out. It's the same as you find on tons of Fender products. Always I like to talk about the neck profile. The neck profile on this is massively small. Really, really kind of small, slim neck profile, which I think will suit a lot of people. A lot of people love that kind of slim profile. If you watch these videos regularly, you know I'm not a massive fan of slim profiles, but I do think it works quite nicely. For me, it's a little bit cramped down at the bottom because I've got fairly large hands, um, but it does thicken out quite a lot. It really widens out, um, so a very slim widthways neck profile down here, um, but it definitely fills out kind of to a more typical Fender Jazz or P-Bass width. Um, the neck itself is um, doesn't really fatten up particularly um, as you come up the neck. It just really flattens and rounds out. But it's got a really nice feel in the way that it does that. Um, a little bit more um, depth just here to support the um, back of the neck and the neck join. Um, but other than that, a really slim tapered profile feels feels really nice. One other thing to mention that I never remember to do in these videos is that um, in buying this bass, you're also going to get um, some free online lessons from Fender Play. So if you're just starting out, um, you're going to get that free with the bass and it's worth checking out. Um, and even if you're not just starting out, you um, have access to you know, the library of lessons on there and might be of some use to you. I know even at the minute they've actually offered their Fender Play service for free. So if you haven't or aren't going to buy this bass but just want to check out Fender Play stuff, um, go and check on their website because it's currently free due to the coronavirus just to give people something to do and a way to advance their skills, which I think is a nice touch. Not that I'm paid to say that, but I just thought I'd, I'd mention it and give a bit of a public service announcement while I'm here.
In the interest of fairness, those of you who watch these videos regularly know I always like to give kind of a little bit of criticism. Um, and obviously this is in the lower end of the market, so we can't expect everything to be perfect. As I've always said, the cheaper the bass, the less time they have to spend on it. You can get some absolutely amazing instruments. Go and check out my truth about buying a bass in 2020 video, where I tell you just how much you know you can really get some great basses in the cheaper end of the market. But there are always concessions, and one of those places is kind of on the, the really small details. They're not going to be at the same level you'd find from an American instrument or an instrument that's in thousands of pounds range. So just a couple of those things on this bass for me that, you know, they're little irritations that you can fix up and sort yourself. Um, the first one for me was that the jazz bass pickup was a little bit low. So they don't spend much time setting these basses up. They don't have the time to do so. Um, you know, for the budget, it's really good value. Uh, but for me, this jazz bass pickup was a little bit too far down. Easily fixed, just take a screwdriver um, and pull, you know, two or three turns left on each of the screws and that will just raise the pickup up. Um, and that just gives you a bit more balance between the two pickups. Um, they were kind of set equal heights and a jazz bass pickup is always a little bit quieter than a P bass. So always worth keeping in mind, you want to have that jazz bass pickup a little bit higher than the P. Same for a normal jazz bass, you always want that back pickup a little bit higher than the front pickup. Another thing that I'm not so keen on is the um, turn on the volume and tone knobs. Um, it's not level as you turn across, so you get this kind of effect as you turn the knob. Um, which again, it's a really fussy little thing that I would find frustrating over time, but only because it could be a little bit better, and I'm a bit of a perfectionist. The finish on the fretboard um, around the edges is really good, so no problems there and no issues with frets either, they're, they're all nicely tapered and cut away, um, so no sharp fret edges or anything like that. And then the only other point I could make possibly, and I mean this is really tiny minutiae kind of stuff, the kind of stuff that most people might own a base for 20 years and never even look at it, but obviously I'm looking at it, want to be really keen um, in what I'm you know, giving a really honest representation of this product. Um, the cut as you come to the end of the fingerboard it's just not quite straight but it's so so minor um, that most people aren't going to care and you probably just think I've wasted 10 seconds of your time by mentioning that on this video but for me got to be honest got to run through those tiny little details and show you where that difference is for many people that's not going to be worth spending 600 pounds or more um, for a much more expensive base so those are the specs of the base let me know what you think of the specs um, in the comments below. I think it's a really cool feature set. Um, and I'm going to show you particularly the electronics um, and show you the difference that those make. So I'm going to run you through now just some solo finger style stuff, um, show you the different pickup combinations, and then talk to you about what I do um, with a PJ setup and how I kind of like to run it and some of the cool tricks that you get from having this double tone um, and two pickup PJ combination. So this is both pickups on full um, and the volume up on both. <laughs> then this is just the P pickup on its own. that p-tone sounds really cool I think it's a little bit like a hybrid between a Mustang and a full-size standard precision bass you get a little bit more bass in there from the, the shorter scale it's a little bit more scooped in the mids um, but still retaining enough of that p-bass nose to cut through a mix really cool sound and I kind of attribute that pretty much solely to the 32 inch scale this is the front pickup with the tone rolled off Then the back pickup soloed, and we're going to get some hum here because it is a true single coil pickup. Just a little bit more noise there. Perfect. 
classic J bass tone, and then roll that off as well. So those are the pickups on their own. Now, something I really like to do is to blend the combinations together. The thing with the PJ is that the P is always going to be a little bit bassier and a little bit warmer sounding than the jazz pickup. Um, but I tend to find using them in different combinations of volume is the most interesting way um, to use a PJ. So one of my default things for really sitting in a mix in a band is to leave the P bass pickup on full. And then what I'm going to do is take the jazz bass pickup down just a little bit, 25% or something like that. Um, so give you an idea of it together, so this is together. And then this is that combination I said about before, just taking the jazz bass down a little bit. For me, we're getting more of that P bass depth and, and, and mid-range punch um, with a little bit more of the upper mid-range cut from the jazz bass pickup. So it gives a little bit more clarity to that classic P bass tone. And it's kind of a little bit smoother in the mids, kind of scoops it a little bit as you would get on a, a typical jazz bass. I'm going to do kind of the opposite now. This is more of my solo -y type tone. So jazz bass pickup on full, so back pickup on full and then just roll the front back a little bit, kind of 50%, something like that. So it's adding a bit more bass to the sound, but it's primarily um, a jazz bass finger style tone, that Jacko type vibe, but with some added bass. One last thing I like to do is to use the tone controls. So take the tone off on one entirely and then have the tone wide open on another pickup. My favourite combination for that is the um, rear pickup to be on full and the front pickup to be um, tone rolled off entirely. This is going to give you an extra bit of warmth and fatness but also quite a lot of still clarity from having that back pickup there with the tone wide open. So I'm going to give you that a demo now. For me that's just a real nice blend of the two. You've got some warmth and some roundness, but you've also got the clarity that you can do things like play harmonics and they're still going to ring through. So that's one of my favourite combinations when you've got the option with two tone controls. So at this point in the video I'm just going to take you through um, the variety of pickup combinations in a mix with some drums. The most important thing is to remember if you do get this bass, play around with the amount of volume on each pickup and the tone on each. There's so many options in there that I can't put them all into this one video because it would literally last for, you know, an hour or something and you don't want to hear me play the same thing over a loop for an hour. But keep in mind, um, these are just a handful of the combinations and having these two pickups um, and two tone controls and volume knobs together in one bass is a really, really versatile option to have. <laughs> Thank 
Thank you. 
So that's the Tone Demo, hopefully that's been really helpful to you. If it has, hit that like button and put in the comments below what your favourite combination of pickups and tone was. In this last section of the video, I'm just going to give you my conclusions on this bass and kind of give you an idea of who I think this bass is really well suited for. So for my money, this is the most versatile Squire bass that I have played and used so far for all the videos that I've done for the Guitar Center. Um, but it does have the advantage of being the pickup combination that I really like, um, as well as having this dual tone volume knob um, option. For those of you who have watched my classic Vibe 70s precision bass video, um, in that video I said that the NATO body added a lot of mid-range and took away from the bottom end of the bass. Um, and it's interesting that with this Jaguar bass, I feel like that bottom end is kind of restored by having the shorter scale. There's just a little bit more fatness in the, in the mid-range of the tone um, and the lower mid-range in particular, um, which I think is coming from that slightly shorter scale length. I personally find that scale length to be really, really comfortable and actually this is the first 32 inch bass I've ever played. Um, somehow, I'm not quite sure how I've never really come across them, but it's quite a rare um, scale length to go for the medium scale. Played a lot of short scale basses, plenty of 34 long scale, and even longer than that, thing was up to 37. Um, but 32 is a, a scale length I haven't come across too much. Um, and if I'm honest, this has kind of got me really considering trying out some more 32 inch scale stuff. There's a real nice amount of fatness to it without it kind of losing the definition that you get from a 34 inch scale bass. Um, and at the same time, the frets are still big enough and wide enough to feel quite a lot like a 34 inch scale bass. But particularly when you come up to the top of the neck, it makes playing chords and things like that a lot easier, um, which is something that I do a lot of. So definitely going to consider finding more basses that are in this scale length. I think that scale length also is going to make it a little bit easier for you. If you are new to the bass or you want um, just a bass with a kind of different sound, it's not as drastic as playing a short scale bass. There's not as much of a difference between going 32 to 34 um, as there is 34 to 30. And so there's not really going to have to be too much technique adjustment. So I'd quite highly recommend this if you're starting out on the bass um, or buying for a younger player. You have that advantage of it being a little bit shorter, so for shorter arms or whatever, makes it a little bit easier. Um, but it's not so significant that they're going to have to relearn everything. Um, starting again when moving to a 34 inch scale bass. I think the choice to have um, both a P and a J pickup in this bass as well as individual tone controls for each it's just it's really great in terms of versatility. Um, it's hard to go wrong with a PJ setup you can solo that P bass pickup and just sit on a fat groove you know that typical kind of thing but at the same time if you want to play it with a little bit more attack a little bit more punch cut through a mix a bit more you can put that jazz bass pickup on, roll the P bass off, or roll some of it off. Really, the options you have with these two pickups, two tone controls, and two volume knobs, it's, it's hard to beat in, a, in the passive world. Overall, I think this bass is quite easy to recommend for most people, particularly if you're buying your first or second bass. Hard to go wrong with this. If you want a little bit more versatility, but still with a Fender um, that kind of fits in you know, a typical band look and mix, hard to go wrong with this bass. The only person I wouldn't really suggest this bass to is if you already have a Mustang PJ. It's not so drastically different that you're missing out and you really need to have this to sit in between, say, a full-size PJ, this in the middle, and then the Mustang below it. It's just not really necessary. But other than that, if you're looking for another bass that's versatile or you want to try out kind of the P-bass tone without necessarily the P-bass neck or entire feel or shape, definitely check this bass out. So hopefully that's all you need to know about the Squire Classic Vibe Jaguar bass. Let me know your thoughts on this bass in the comments below. I'm actually quite taken with it. Um, I'm going to go play it a little bit more before I take it back to the shop. Um, but as I say, let me know your thoughts. Don't forget to hit the like button. And if you want to see more content like this, I do this every week. Every Tuesday pretty much is my gear review day. So if you want to see more gear reviews, consider hitting that subscribe button, hit the notification bell, and make sure that you stay up to date with my channel. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to check out Langley Guitar Center. I'll leave a link in the description below. And also don't forget to check out my Instagram and the Guitar is Center Instagram, which will be both below me now. And uh, I will see you around soon.